Hello everyone, I'm Buck Weezer. We're putting the do into do it yourself. This is Thunder. So named by my daughters because they name all of our vehicles. Thunder's a 2003 Honda Odyssey. And we bought her one day in summer when it was threatening to rain and you could hear thunder in the distance, hence the name. Thunder has some issues, but the one we're t trying to tackle today is a parasitic battery drain. If you don't drive Thunder at least once a week, if you wait, a wait two weeks, you'll come out and Thunder will be dead. She won't start, you'll get nothing. Just put a voltage meter on the battery, it was less than five volts. So nothing's gonna happen like that. So I wanna determine, if possible, what is the source of the battery drain. Now if it were a drain overnight, I'd feel a little more confident that I'm gonna be able to figure it out. But it's a slow drain, like I said, over a week or two. So I don't know the last time Thunder was driven, but it's been two or three weeks, so sure enough, she's dead. Uh, my first step will be to charge the battery back up and uh, and then we're going to put an ammeter between the negative battery cable and the negative battery post and uh, just kind of simulate a sleep condition start pulling some fuses to see if that makes any difference in our reading and see if possibly we can solve this I've got a couple ideas already one might be this tailgate I feel like the car thinks the tailgate is constantly open even when it's closed that's because when you're driving on the light on the dash you know the little red lights to indicate which door op is open that dash that that light for the tailgate says it's always open even when it's not I'm not sure if that's going to be a tip off or not but the car's got some some uh, idiosyncratic issues that I'm aware of as the owner and driver so we'll see what happens let's get that battery charged up and see if we can figure this out together all right so our battery is fully charged now let's see what kind of voltage reading we get can you see that 12.46 12.47 that should be enough to uh, get it to start and run Let's uh, let's see if it'll cooperate in that way. See that? Thunder. All right. Oh, and everything's lit up as it should be. And she's all happy again. But if I don't uh, take it for a daily or weekly drive, that battery will drain down again. And uh, looks like a couple of things here on the dash. Obviously, I don't have my seatbelt on. But you can see that the lights for the, the vehicle showing the one sliding door open, which it's not, and the tailgate uh, also, it says it's a jar, which it's not. So I don't know if those are part, if that's an indicator of what might be draining our battery. I mean, I think normally that stuff gets ignored and it goes to sleep when your car shut off. Well, let's set it up and uh, we'll set up the ammeter and just kind of check it at different intervals and see if we can uh, observe any, uh, you know, draw irregular battery draws. We'll see what's going on hopefully okay so let me show you what I'm doing I've got my multimeter set up measuring amp DC amps and I've got it set up between the negative battery terminal and the negative battery cable so I disconnected the cable it's a little bit hokey there but I needed to do that for my alligator clip to grab onto something and uh, 
So that's connected to my multimeter, which is reading amps. I've got it on the 20 amp scale, and the reading is, if you can see that, 0.12. Now it's been like this for about an hour. So 12, 11 or 12 hundred, hundredths of an amp, or 120, 110 milliamps, if I'm reading it correctly. And it's been like that for, like I said, about an hour. Now what I did prior to making those connections is I've simulated the doors being shut by using this clamp to hold the door button in. I did that on both sides, passenger side also, because there is fuse boxes right there at the foot on the passenger side and there's one up here under the dash on the driver's side. And I want to... Uh, after I feel like the car has put itself to bed, to rest, and I don't know how long that takes, I'd like to just start pulling fuses one at a time, see if we can, and watch this meter to see if it, it drops down. I don't know what kind of amperage draw we should be experiencing here with the vehicle at rest. Probably need to do a little research to see what is the proper range. But a, a, you know, a tenth or of an amp or more seems to be a little bit much to me, 120 amps. So let me do a little bit of research and uh, I'll come back and check this at various intervals and then I'll start, you know, pulling fuses one at a time to see if we can try to isolate which circuit might be the culprit. Okay, so here we are. It's been a couple hours. Our, our amperage draw has not decreased, hanging around 120 milliamps. <clears throat> and uh, we've got our primary uh, fuse and relay box here under the hood, but there's also a secondary one with a couple of fuses in it. And, of course, there's the two inside the... Uh, inside the cabin on the driver's side and the passenger side <coughs> so I pulled out the uh, I pulled out the manual just to see the list of fuses and where they are all right so I thought I would examine some of these here over here in the primary fuse and relay box so far I haven't uncovered anything as I work my way through it these are conveniently labeled there's 20 amper ABS. I found a, a fuse puller. That sure helps. Headlamp Oops. fuse is no big deal. All right, well. Watching me pull fuses isn't too exciting, so if I come across anything, I'll bring you back in. Well, that didn't take long. <clears throat> I pulled this 40 amp fuse. It's marked Backup ACC, Backup Accessories. I don't know what that means. I put it back in. Getting a draw and it drops back down to 120, 130 milliamps. So that's pretty interesting. I'm surprised it dropped to zero. I might have to change the setting to see if there's really any draw at all, but I should still be getting some reading or some draw. I don't know what back up ACC means backup accessories there's no backup camera see how it's listed in here number 13 40 amp backup ACC. Again, I don't know what that is, but when I pull it out, 
our draw goes down to nothing at least on the 20 amp scale put it back in and we're getting a draw so there's just something going on in the rear part of the vehicle you remember I was talking about the tailgate being a little suspicious uh, let me go do a little research online and see if I can figure out what that fuse covers and that will give us a little bit more direction all right, so in the waning moments of daylight, I've got an assistant who's going to keep her eyes on that uh, uh, screen. I'm going to pull fuses from under the under the dash on the passenger side. I know that this fuse that we pulled out here feeds some of them. I don't um, it's on. Yeah, it's on, but this the, it doesn't light up. Okay. All right, so you just tell me. I'm going to pull them one at a time, okay. and I'll always probably say, any dip change, and you just answer yes or no. Okay. Or if you see a change, just tell me. Okay. Any change? No. Any change? No. Anything? No. Mm, Anything? No. Anything? No. Yes. Uh huh. Do you see a change? No. Yes. It just dropped to ten, and then it dropped to zero. Dropped to ten and dropped to zero. I pulled a seven point five amp fuse. Which one did I pull? Yeah, Alright, so it dropped down to zero, huh? Yeah, it dropped down to ten and then it dropped down to zero. Alright, so... <laughs> you see right here? The one I pulled out is number 13. Isn't it 70... 75? Seven thir 13 is this guy here. It's a one, two, three, fourth down the line. Number 13, 7.5 amps, that's what this is. It says clock and backup. What's that mean? This fuse powers our clock and something backup, our backup lights. Maybe, I don't know. I don't really go cars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you're good enough to read when it drops down to zero, which was exactly what we were trying to do. All right, I got to figure out what things are controlled by this fuse. 13 clock back up. We've identified the culprit, but now can we find the actual fault on the vehicle? That's going to be our next. That's going to be our next step. Yeah. How many 